Hello my friends, Dr. Rob Kiltz. How are you doing? Another awesome and amazing day. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist, a reproductive immunologist. I'm a gynecologic surgeon where I focus and specialize in reproductive infertility, repetitive losses, and fixing the uterus, the tubes, and the ovaries when the intra-abdominal pelvic space is suffering from some inflammatory process. And I've been learning and sharing and talking so much about how the human Ferrari, I call it the miracle machine, works, that is a little bit different than most of us have been taught. And it really is such a interesting and fun concept. You have to have a ton of fun with it, but basically the human body needs lots of air and oxygen, right? We need a fair amount of water, right? And we need food. Now, the environment of all of this also brings in microorganisms which elicit an immunologic reaction called inflammation. All right? What do we know about inflammation? This is the simple part, right? We know we're all breathing, we can go maybe uh, one to three minutes without air. Okay, you can go one to three days without water and one to three weeks without food. Miracle, right? Amazing. But we're all starving after just an hour or two after our breakfast, right? Which is crazy, right? So these things also come in not only with microorganisms, but other antigenic components along with chemicals which ultimately adversely or in a positive or neutral way affect the human machine and all other organisms, right? So obviously from air we need to bring in oxygen and we have to get rid of CO2. Water is critical, right? Because we need the water in order to allow the juices and everything to flow, allow the molecular uh, uh, processes to take place. The food in general comes with all these things along with the water and the air, right? The dust, the dirt, the pollen, the bacteria, the yeast, the viruses. But it also comes with the chemicals, heroin, cyanide, arsenic, nicotine, and more, all right? They come with estrogen, progestins. They come with the components that elicit the inflammatory reactions, which we call them antigens, which stimulates our immune system to bring upon the cellular and chemical and physical components of inflammation which require increased blood flow, right? Which elicits heat, redness, swelling, pain, and dysfunction, and ultimately potentially either fixing or failure of the structure. That's the important component to recognize the simplicity of the story. We need the air, the oxygen, I'm sorry, the air, the water, the food, but it comes with all these things as we're seeing in the coronavirus, how damaging and deadly the proteinaceous, the glycoprotein molecules of viruses, they either allow us to identify them and elicit the local and regional and distant systems. And this is a complex cascade of functions that we'll get into in another talk. But what I really want to share is we need to take in the food. We need fatty acids and we need amino acids in our diet. But we do not need any carbohydrates 
in our diet at all, but interesting enough, carbohydrates are a critical component to the normal functioning of our body because without glucose and glucose's components, and we'll get into that, you cannot cause glycosylation, which is the normal binding of glucose to the proteins and the lipids to create their normal function or their normal dysfunction, which allows all of these things to function normally. You have to continue to breathe in oxygen to allow the blood flow and the, the continuously trading off of oxygen and carbon dioxide. If you build up too much carbon dioxide, that's not good for the local environment. It's not good for the brain. It's not good for the mighty mitochondria. Remember, the mitochondria, and we can play with this, requires acetyl-CoA in order to make ATP. Really amazing. It's true that amino acids and, and, and simple sugars can be made into acetyl-CoA, but this happens in the liver via insulin. If you don't have a liver or you don't have insulin from your pancreas, you cannot make this and ultimately you will die. We make this which makes fatty acids and this is ongoing always, which is stored in the liver and then stored in our adipose tissue, basically everywhere. We also must make, this is critical, ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate acetoacetate. This is going back and forth because this is the water soluble component, which my bet is, this is a critical thing for the brain. That's the brain food. Glucose, my friend, my bet is still, it's all about glycosylation, which is basically taking the lipid bilayers, all right, and with all the proteinaceous particles that go through the cells, and this is the inner and the outer, or whichever one, which is the same thing in the mitochondria, the nucleus, and all over our human body. Glycation allows the components of sugar, and look up glycobiology, which is amazing, but this allows the proteins to have their proper three-dimensional structure or to have their abnormal structure. So my bet is, is that in general, glucose is meant to be in the range down here, not up here. So 40 to 60, and I'm just guessing on some numbers in general, but if we're built to go on a long fasting, my bet is glucose ingestion should be low. Remember, you can make glucose out of the products of fatty acids and amino acids, and you never have a requirement to eat a plant material ever, and yes, we do and we can, but remember, the plants in general come with mostly the antigenic and the chemicals, the phyto, phyto uh, chemicals, right? and the phytoantigens, right? the, the latex, the glycans, the oxalates, which are the inflammatory com components that elicit the immune system to stimulate inflammation, which damages a, a local cut, but it's also remembered, this is critical for the fixing but because of a repetitive nature of continuously consuming a tremendous amount of carbohydrates, which come with the phytochemicals, right, and the phytoantigens, 
These things damage our bodies and mostly the skin, the mucous membranes, the inner and outer, by the way. We put all these plant materials and plant oils on our body. We ingest them. They elicit this inflammatory reaction. They damage the glycosylation by causing, causing something called glycation. The glycogen is critical to keep the glucose in this level so that you can provide the proper amount of glycosylation, but when the glucose rises, it then switches to mostly glycation. Your body is continuously working to repair the damage. Cardiovascular disease or, or heart disease, coronary artery disease is a glycation disease due to excessive amounts of glucose, which we eat three to six times a day. Remember, snacks in between, which gives your glucose levels much higher than they should be. It didn't make sense to me that eating a carnivore-type diet, which is all made of fatty acids and amino acids, and yes, there's some glycogen and carbohydrates in there. Is that possibly a component? Sure it is. But we have ketogenic uh, amino acids, we have glycogenic amino acids, they enter the system at very many different places, but because we have such a complicated story of the me metabolic pathways, you can see how this can get so complicated, but when you begin to look at glycosylation and glycobiology and recognize that we didn't really understand the real function of glucose because we don't talk about it. And I know that glycobiology is really in the last 20 plus or minus years. And I didn't even recognize that the function of glucose is glycosylation. Without it, you cannot be alive. You can't mentate. The neurotransmitters can't function. All of these enzymatic processes in the mitochondria between the neurons and the synapses, as we call them, don't function. They don't function fast. The simple story is the body is the miracle machine. It's made to go days, if not weeks, without food. It's only made to go a day or two or three without water, but we didn't carry around a bottle, a canteen, but we learned how to so that we can, we can move further and further. We learned how to cultivate and grow more carbohydrates because they're packed with the ability to make fatty acids and to make some amino acids, but in fact, they do not contain all of the essential fatty acids and amino acids. They're contained in the meat, the eggs, and the mother's milk. This is the crazy story, I know. As a fertility physician, and I generally love to provide the raw footage, the raw stories. And I've been making these videos for years and I'm not the smartest guy in the world. There are plenty of really smart, intelligent, amazing people that are using these glycosylations and the, the glycobiome in order to, to make the markers in order to help identify the cancers and treat the cancers. But it's all related because the immune system must create the markers in order to identify the proper normal cells and the abnormal cells, the human leukocyte antigen markers, the, the complexes are all glycoproteins. That's the marker of who and what we are. Our DNA likely is almost identical, but the glyco Glycosylation is what determines the differences. And we're so stuck on the fact that we think that glucose is the energy source for our body. But my bet is, the mystery is it's, it's important for the glycosylation. If you can't glycosylate, if you have too much glycation, you have too much inflammation, Eventually, you get more and more deposition of the antigenic components, the lectates, the oxalates, the phytates, 
the glycation particles that cause dementia, Alzheimer's, difficulty hearing, seeing, believing. The muscles don't work as well. Remember, the more heat in the exercise, it damages the body. We then have to have more blood flow and more fixing. The immune system is turned on. It keeps on trying to fix, 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 but then eventually it fails, fails, fails. The healthiest diet we're told to eat, remember, is a carbohydrate-filled diet, which causes sugar coating. Remember, a little bit of powder dust is good. Remember, it's, it's like the, the sands and the dirt and the soil is really the lipid bilayer. The proteins are the trees and the glycation, glycosylation is part of the leaves and the fruits. That's why we're so sweet. It's true. So this is just a quick overview. You must take in the food Remember the fatty acids, amino acids, and the carbohydrates or simple sugars are what is broken down from our complex food. Amino acids and simple sugars must go to the liver in order to be converted to fatty acids. Fatty acids go to the lymphatics where they go distributed everywhere. But remember, we are meant to eat a lot of animal fat, but not a lot of plant fat. Plant fat is a phytochemical that ultimately may cause damage to the normal glycosylation process, the immunologic process, the neurovascular process. And without acetyl-CoA coming from fatty acids, my friends, you die fast. This is Dr. Robert Kiltz, Dr. Robert Kiltz, MD. Check out our website. Check out our Mind, Body, Smile, The Fertile Secret, uh, Fertile Spirit. See my healing arts, the fertile grounds, and I've been talking more and more about ketogenic lifestyle. Remember, keto is a simple label. Ketones are critical, likely for the brain, not glucose. It's always acetyl CoA, and it's always fat. And if you're too, 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 too skinny, and if you're exercising too, too, too much, that causes repetitive damage. Not good for you, my friends. Go slow. Meditation, prayer every day. Faith and food equal fertility. And the more you focus on the brain and the thoughts, the more you input mind, body, smile. And just check out some of my books on Amazon, my friends. God bless. Enjoy this day a little Dr. Rob Kilt's Rock.